All right, what's up guys, Dust here. And um, today I just wanna share with you guys three quick and easy steps that you can do right now to fix your squat immediately. Let's talk about the squat actually first before we go into the video. Uh, the squat itself is dubbed the king of all leg workouts. Uh, heck, it might be, some people might think it's the king of all workouts. I beg to differ. Uh, I prefer, uh, for me, I think it's the deadlifts is the king of all workouts. Uh, if I have to pick one out of everything. But that's, that's definitely a separate video for all this debate. The squat is a compound movement. So normally, I will program the squat at the beginning of a workout, especially with a heavy load. Otherwise, if when you start doing it later on during your workouts, your body might be too fatigued to actually produce max amount of hypertrophy and strength gain. Now, the muscle that will be targeting the most for a squat, you guessed it, it's your legs, all right? Not your lower back, not your core, not your back, but the main drive is your legs. You're looking at knee extension and as well as hip extension, as well as the isometric lumbar extension, which is a rectus spina. People often use that a little too much and can often lead to injuries and lower back pain. Now for the hip extension, you're predominantly looking at glutes and a doctor. As, and then for the knee extension, you're looking at a lot of activation for your quads. People might be confused about whether it's their hamstring coming to play or it's their adductors. Uh, in fact, the hamstring doesn't come in play at all uh, because of the knee extension. There is no lengthening of the muscle because of the knee extension. Therefore, the main drive for you is your quads. So as you can see, these examples, we have a quarter squat, you have a parallel squat, you have an absolute grasp, or just slightly below the crease of a squat. So the deeper you get, more activation for your glutes and more activation for your adductors as well. So also when you're coming back to train after a COVID break, God knows how long, right? You wanna take this slow, take it light, don't even rush to close to what you were doing before COVID. You know, try start off with 50% of everything you were doing and work your way up every week. Eventually, you'll get back there. A month, you're good too. Now, on to the tip number one. This might be trivial, but breathe. All right, air, breathe. This might sound silly to you and it surprised a lot of my clients at my gym that they've improved their squat instantaneously as soon as I taught them how to breathe properly during a squat. So let's take a little test for yourself. Put your hand in front of your chest and put one on your belly. Inhale. Which one are you doing? Is your shoulder coming up? Is your chest popping up as you inhale? Or is your stomach getting filled up with air and oxygen? Now our goal is right now to fill your stomach with as much air as possible so you can brace your core as tight as possible. Another thing you can do is, before you even come down for a squat, take a deep breath, get it into your stomach, and then descend. Now hold that breath, make sure that core is really, really tight. As you come up almost two thirds way up, and you exhale, and you repeat. So you saw how many times have you seen someone kind of just collapse and kind of wobbly as they do your squat? Most likely it's because they're not bracing their core hard enough or they're kind of just breathing through the entire motion of it and, and lead towards to injuries long-term. Now, tip number two, your feet. Yes, those nasty, no, I'm just kidding, not nasty. Those strong feet of yours, all right? For all the people there who work in the office, who wears lots of dress shoes, you might be suffering from this, all right? Now, how many times have you heard this cue from your trainer or from anybody? Drive with your heel, drive with your heel, put the pressure on your heel, drive up with your heel, right? That only creates imbalance for your squat. Now, what you wanna do is the opposite. You wanna spread out the entire foot out. You wanna spread those toes out and create like a tripod for your foot. 
your big toe, your pinky toe, and your heel. Those three points, you wanna maximize stability as you do your squats, including your deadlifts. Press your big toe into the ground, arch your foot, make sure your feet are working hard to stabilize yourself, and then you squat. How is your ankle doing? How's your calves doing? Are you mobile enough to do actually do a deep squat? Check out your ankles, right? Look at this test right here. Do an ankle mobility test. See how far you can get your knees over your toes. Find a box, find a wall, get a tape. Boom, check it out. Now, I'm 5'7 and a half, and I require about 10 to 12 centimeters of clearance for my knees to pass over my toes to perform a deep squat. The taller you are, the more clearance you need. You can temporarily fix that. You can lift your heels up by having a little wedge on the back of your foot. If you don't have one of these guys, you can definitely just put a plate uh, under your heels. When you do a squat, you'll be able to sit down and squat a lot lower. What kind of shoes are you wearing, all right? Are you wearing running shoes? Are you wearing Yeezys? Are you wearing basketball shoes? How often when you do squat, you feel like your feet are really unstable. It's always coming up, coming back. You're not sure how to grip yourself. It's just kind of wobbly all the time. Uh, try some different shoes. Um, I would say try a pair of Metcons maybe. Uh, those are strictly for training, uh, CrossFit training. You can try a pair of powerlifting shoes. Uh, anything that's slightly bigger and open toe box, flatter sole, and maybe even a little bit of elevated heel to help with the mobility. Uh, for me, I like these guys. Um, I like to feel the ground as I grip through it. What you want to do long term is to fix that ankle mobility. You can start doing banded stretches, ankle mobility work. So in the future, you don't have to rely on these. Now number three, very key, balance. Uh, to me, the best squat is the balance squat. Now some of the common errors I've seen my clients do when they squat is they drive their hips first, they drive their knees first. As well as we come up and down as you squat, you don't brace your core enough so your hips rise up first, or your chest rise up first, or your knees goes forward again, you lose tons of balance. What you wanna do is, that's your tip number one, brace your core. Your entire body is in contraction to move as one unit Ideally, when you squat for a high bar, you want the weight to be distributed straight down your midfoot. I'm a myth for you to think that your knees cannot pass your toe. For you to be able to perform a deep squat, your knees most likely will have to pass your toes. To some certain degrees, depends on the length of your femur. The taller you are, probably you need more clearance, like we said, for ankle mobility. If you are going to be performing a high bar squat, most likely you'll require less ankle mobility, but you'll probably require more shoulder mobility as you perform the lift. Some people have trouble just getting lower on a squat because we're not used to the pattern. We're not used to getting down deep enough and keeping that balance. One of the good exercises you can try is a goblet squat. The weight in front of you is gonna help you counterbalance as you squat deeper and deeper. Ideally, you want your torso and your shin to be parallel, as well as your thigh to be nearly parallel with the ground. But this goes a little different for a high bar. You'll probably have a little more hinge because of less angle flexion. All right, bonus tips. Another thing we always see is the knee valgus. When your knees are wobbling at your squat, it caves in, and usually that happens when you're not using your glutes enough. You don't have enough uh, external rotation for your hip as you squat. What you wanna do is be able to point your toes outwards, about 15 to 30 degrees outwards. Usually, I would like to place my feet at least shoulder width apart. You want to point your knees in the same direction as your toes. A few things that you can help, you can try with a hip circle, dry those knees out, dry those knees out as you squat and really feel your glutes firing up. Now another thing you can try is turning, external rotating your feet and driving those knees out. 
and having more glutes activation as well. There are so many technical issues with the squat because it's so complex and it's very hard to master. Uh, even to now, I'm still tweaking little things here and there for my squat to hoping that it'll get better and more efficient over time. But it's definitely something worthwhile for you to perfect and practice over and over. Now, I would say the only time for you to not squat is probably limited due to injuries. These are the alternative exercises you can perform to mimic the same effect of a squat. You can do a reverse lunge, which is very, very safe for your knees, less impact. You can try squatting with a Smith machine, which requires less stability issues. And also you want to incorporate some lower back extensions, hip extensions to also target the erectospina uh, and your glutes as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you do, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, please subscribe to my channel for more content in the future. And for that, hope everyone stays safe during the lockdown 2.0. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Peace out.